Traveling back from Australia, so he's You're Australian, yeah. Yeah. So, do you believe Jesus? Do you believe in the Trinity, like for example, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Yeah. Where do you get this idea from? Because I was always I was fascinated with this. Where do you get the idea of the Trinity from? Yeah, well, from the Bible, obviously. Which so, part? I've read it from back to end. I've not found it. If we start with Jesus, okay. Have you read John's Gospel? I've read John's Gospel. Yeah, in chapter one it says, "In the beginning was the Word." The Word was with God. The Word was God. The Word yeah, became flesh among the among us. Yes. A few verses later it says, "And the Word became flesh." Sure. And brought among us. Um, and. Yeah, that says that Jesus was the Word, the Word that was with God, can and you, the Word that was God. Can I ask you a question about that? Because I like, I like John one one, right? I'll tell you why. First thing is that John one one is taken from a Greek philosopher who's called Philo, historically, right? So this formula is in the beginning was God, and the Word was God. John took from Philo. Who was, a, who was a philosopher, he took his formula and he put it in the Bible, right? So I'll, first I would say that it's proof that it's not inspired by God because he took from someone else, right? Second thing I would say, when you say in the beginning, beginning of what? So God has a beginning? No, obviously, in the like in the beginning of time, yeah, as we know. So in the beginning, so the, word, so, so the word was in the beginning of creation? With the word in the beginning. In the beginning was the word. So in the beginning of creation was the word. In the beginning, the word was. So no, no, no. It says in the beginning was the word. Well, this is word for word, right? Because I know word for word, right? In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God, and the word became flesh among the among us, etc. Right? He was with him. Sure. So in the beginning was the word. That would mean that the word is in the beginning of creation. It's a part of creation. It has a beginning. In the beginning was the word. If you said, what do you think about that? The start of the soccer match was the team. Mm. So that doesn't necessarily mean the team was formed at the start of the soccer match, but it means that at the start of the soccer match there was a team. If you say what, can you repeat, you repeat, repeat with what you said okay. again? Does that work? Like, if, if you're saying, like, okay, so this is a soccer match. At the start of the soccer match was the team. Okay. That would mean linguistically because you're saying was. was that it wasn't that it wasn't before. I was interpreting that as in the beginning meaning like he always was there. Not that there was a literal beginning of God, because we believe God's eternal, obviously. Okay, no he problem. Time. Yeah. So the second part of it would be in the beginning was the word. Yeah. The word was with God. Can you be with yourself? That's what the Trinity is. It's three it's it's, it's one God but three persons. It's like um, it's, it's one God. Like, it's, it's like comprehensible, but it's there because it's we believe it because of what the Bible says. Three three persons but one God. So it's the Trinity, the Triune. Like Jesus, it's not just John. If you think John's corrupted, which if it was, no, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't use the term uh, John corrupted or not, right? Yeah. What, what I was trying to say is a specific formula it's taken from Philo historically, right? If you believe John's correct, then you cannot read John and deny that it says that Jesus is God. You'd have to say that John was wrong. No, no, no. Uh, it's so explicit. He should, says. So right now, disciples worship him. Mm. He right now, uh, right now, I'm, I'm uh, just to explain my position. Right now, I'm not taking any position, right? Oh. So I'm not saying because you're saying either or. No, I'm saying right now, I have a text in front of me and I'm trying to objectively analyze that text That's to come good. to a conclusion. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? So, so far, I'm not taking any positions. I've read the Bible, but what I like to do instead of putting my understanding is to ask the people who are yeah. believing in that scripture, right? So, so, you, so, no problem. So, uh, coming back to the idea, right? The idea is the Trinity. I'll define the Trinity and tell me if, it, if what I'm saying makes sense or not, right? Yeah. Trinity says, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Co-equal, co-eternal. The Father is not the Son. The Son is not the Holy Spirit. Three persons in one being. That's according to the Nicene and Constantinople Creed. That's the definition, right? So this is where it comes from, by the way, right? historically, right? So Wait, now, sorry. Sorry. I'm saying that that's what. Yeah, I'm saying that's where the, the, the Trinity comes from. The term of the Trinity is not. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm even saying the concept, and I'll tell you why. Not just the term. I'm, I'm saying the whole idea of the Trinity comes starts in 325, right? You had Arius arguing 
and for for that Jesus was subordinate to the Father. Yeah. You had the uh, Constantine. He didn't like that. He wanted to believe Jesus was God. There was a council, and they were trying to figure out whether Jesus was divine or not. Right? Then you have 381. Before 381, the Holy Spirit they did not know what it was for nearly 400 years. Right? In 381, they concluded that the, the Holy Spirit is a part of the Trinity. I'm just telling you Christian history. They didn't know what the Holy Spirit was. Yeah. What I would say is before, and that's a challenge I can give to any Christian. In the first 300 years of Christianity, I challenge you to bring me one church father who said the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are co-equal, co-eternal. There's not a single church father that said that. That's why there was councils. So the Council of Nicaea was for the whole idea because there was a disagreement. Council of Constantinople, the whole idea because there was a disagreement. There was something that people did not understand. Therefore, they needed a council for. So what I'm saying is that the idea of the Trinity, not the term, the idea, the concept, came from the councils and I will demonstrate that so we've agreed so far what the definition of the Trinity is right which is the father son right so far now it says that the three are one so I need two things from you to, to establish that the Trinity is in the Bible the first thing is that the Trinity calls the father son and Holy Spirit as persons it gives them the, the definition of a person not just being so it separates between the person and the being the second thing you need to establish is that it says that the three are one can you give me any verse in the entire Bible that makes a distinction between between person and being because that comes from the church as well and any ch verse in the Bible that says the three are one you have from Genesis to Revelation so I I can't think of any that is in one verse that says three are one but if you say that one thing is like another thing mm. and then that that thing is also like another thing that means that the three are one right so if I said it depends on what you mean in the context but tell me give an okay, example yes, yeah, yeah okay, great, give great. an example so you can understand what you're saying so one example I can think of is Jesus says all who have seen me have seen the Father okay who have so, seen me have seen the Father okay that's in John chapter 14 verse 9 right okay this was when he was asked by Philip he said show us the Father this is the context yep. and he said uh, I've been with you all of this time you've seen me you've seen the Father right yeah now, I'll ask a question here, right? Is the son the father? No, no. So, have Philip actually saw the father? Can anyone see the father and live? According to the Bible. So, like, he, they cannot see the father as the father. But that's the point of the son, is that they have seen the father. No, no, but the question, have, seen the son. have they seen the father? Because the, the Gospel of John as well, it says, no one can see the father and live. No one can see yeah. God and live, right? Yeah. So, no one has seen God, which is the father, specifically, right? But here, Jesus is saying, if you've seen me, seen me, have seen the father. I'm claiming this could not be literal, because if it was literal, that would mean the son is the father, and it would mean the father is a Palestinian Jew. I think which which is... Really because they're the, they're the one point. but they're different. That's the point of the truth. The point, the point is that they are one. Yeah, he's but, not the father, but they are both the whole... But the he has, whole, has he seen the father? Because the Jesus is making a claim, you've seen the father. Yeah. And not the son. And, and we agree the father... It's sort of validating because, yeah, no man maybe could see the father, but you know, Jesus was at the father's right hand side. So, well, he is there at the moment. So if Jesus, if Jesus is at the right hand side of the father, how can they be one? Well, because... Like it's, they are because they. How? Like it's not. It's if not, I'm on the right, your right hand hand, right hand side. By definition, I'm not you. The right hand side. Because we're human, yeah, and we're constrained. Yeah. Our spirits are constrained to our body. Yeah, but but the Bible uses human language, so uh, we're using it's we're using. Humans, right? Yeah, it's correct. So, so what, what so we're it has to explain things. So like when when the Bible talks about the Father and Son. God the Father didn't mm -hmm. have a kid who was Jesus. Like he didn't have a baby. There's no God the Mother. There's Some Christians believe believe that. Depends yeah. on which Christians you ask. Yeah, so Jehovah's Witness. But like, so that is not literal language. But because, Jesus is from because, the Father. No, because we're humans. Yes. God needed a way to explain the, like the reality of the relationship between God the Father and the Son. So. He, they're not, it's not a father and son relationship, but the closest he could explain that, but that to humans is a father and son relationship. Sure, I understand what you're saying, and I'm not completely disagreeing with what you're saying, right? But yeah. I'm making a claim, right? That 
to give someone language that is not understood is unwise. The creator is all wise. If I have a son, I don't I don't start explaining to him quantum quantum mechanics because I know his level of comprehension is not there. Sure. So I would claim God is not going to tell us. The Bible says, as the Bible says, God is not the author of confusion. Yeah. God, God is not try, going to try to confuse you by giving you language that does not make sense, right? So I'm I'm asking a question about Jesus is at the right hand of the Father, but we still coming back because we diverted from the point. When it says because you brought the verse, right? Sure. When you've seen me, you've seen the Father. My question is very simple. Have Philip seen the Father? I will tell you no, and I will give you why this verse is not literal, because later on it explains why it's not literal. Okay. Because Jesus goes on to speak about the works, the works that he did. So in essence, he's saying, if you've seen the works of the Creator, it's as if you've seen the Creator. If I spl start splitting the, the earth here with my, with my hand, right? If I'm a prophet of God, you essentially have seen the work of God. You essentially have seen God in a way, because you've seen his work. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Yeah. So I'm saying the context explains, if you read later on John 14, if you read the next few verses, Jesus says, speaks about the works and he says, you will do greater works than I. He's telling the, to his disciples, if you believe, you'll actually do greater works than I. I'll give you another explanation from the Bible as well. Acts chapter 2 verse 22. It says, Jesus of Nazareth, a man appointed by God, by miracles, wonders and signs, which God did through him and you're witness to it. So because they are witness to the acts, in essence, they are witness in a way to the creator. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? So that's a proper explanation of the verse that takes away the idea that the father is not the son. Because I cannot say the father is not the son and then claim that they saw the father. Do you understand what I'm trying so to you're, say? You're saying that Jesus is saying that all who have seen the works. The works. If you've seen the works of death, so you've seen you've seen, seen, the, seen the father because you've seen the yeah, I've seen the works, you've yeah, seen the father basically. That's the yeah. Because Jesus spoke in parables, as you, as you would agree, all the time, right? Yeah. Jesus so, also, sorry, just that point. No, it's okay, no, that's um, right. One of the other things like, that strongly suggests in the Gospels is that Jesus was divine and he was God. It was that he forgave sin as well. And okay. Like, and now, can I ask you which verse are you referring to? Um, well, there's a, a verse, there's a story in the Bible in Luke's Gospel where a man gets lowered to the roof um, and before he heals the man, he says, your sins are forgiven. And all the Pharisees couldn't believe it. They're like, how could this man Excellent. forgive sin? I know the verse you're referring he's to. He's claiming to be God. I, I know. He wanted to pick up stones sure. and stone him. Okay. Because he was that's why they wanted to kill Jesus. Not because he said, you know, he could heal someone, but because he said he was God. That's the whole reason to execute No problem. So there are two points here, right? Yeah. First is, uh, I'm not really discussing whether Jesus is God or not, because this is what you're kind of proving with the point, but it's okay. I will do. Yeah. I think that's important because mm. part of the Trinity is that sure, Jesus sure. is God. I don't mind talking about it. Trinity is also sure, sure. That's okay. I don't, I don't trust me. I don't mind because look, I'm not trying to put you in a specific corner. You get the point. I'm, I'm happy to have a discussion, whatever you want to talk about. Because the Trinity is saying that Jesus is God, the Father is God, and the Holy Spirit is God, and these three are one. Sure, sure. I, I understand. So establish that Jesus is God. You're closer to the establishing the Trinity. I agree with you. No problem. So also, we've got to go. We've got to move. It's okay. There's no problem. So there's two points I want to make with the verse that you made. The first point I want to make is that the idea that Jesus said your sins are forgiven. He did not say, I forgive your sins. Linguistically, there's a big, big, big difference there. I'll tell you the big difference is the following. I can inform you of something that God did as a prophet and a messenger of God. Prophet Muhammad, for example, informed some people that they will go to paradise. We don't believe therefore Prophet Muhammad is God because he wasn't the person putting them in paradise. He was just delivering what God told him, right? So him saying your sins are forgiven, it does not prove anything, right? From, from an objective point of view. Second thing I would say, they misunderstood. Sure, sure. I, I just want to an answer the second point. It's the idea of the Pharisees, the people who wanted to kill him. They didn't want to kill him because he was claiming to be God. They were looking for any excuse to kill him. They did not. He said he's the king of the Jews, he's the Messiah. They did not accept him because they, they thought he was uh, born of a prostitute, etc. We don't believe that, right? We believe in the virgin birth, birth as Muslims, right? But that's what they believed. They said he's claiming to be the king of the Jews. He's coming on two, two donkeys to Jerusalem. He's not our Messiah. That's why they wanted to kill him because of that claim has nothing to do with him claiming to be God. Because they made so many claims about Jesus that you don't accept. If you're consistent, you would accept when they call him the devil, the son of the devil, all of the stuff, right? Not just accept when they called him God, right? We don't take knowledge from them, we take knowledge from Jesus, right? So go ahead, you want to say something? I was just dealing with the second yeah, point. Yeah, sure. um, <laughs> no. <laughs> Sorry about that, no, but right. I just didn't want to lose it from my mind because I wanted to deal with the second point that he was trying to make, right? Sure. So, so far, so, coming back to the... Yeah, no, what I was going to say is, so... Just because Jesus has said your sins are forgiven, he didn't specifically say, I forgive your sins. 
yes, that doesn't mean, like, I think you can argue both ways. That doesn't mean the You can, fact. you can, you can. But, but like, it's, so, it's, so Jesus, uh, Jesus, when he told men, which is easier to do, uh, say, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up and walk. So he was doing that on his own authority in both situations, which is easier for me to say to you. No problem. My I sins are forgiven, or get up and walk. So if he was saying, get up and walk, you're saying it on his own authority. You know, you, your sins are forgiven. Sure. It's on Jesus' own authority. You, you hit the nail on the you hit the nail on the head. You said it can go both ways, right? Yes. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I sure, sure. That, yeah. yeah, and that, that's that's an objective point of view. I'm not going to disagree with you. I agree with you. But yeah. what I'm asking for is something clear, right? Because the Trinity is a, is a central doctrine. Yeah. You cannot bring a verse which you have two interpretations, both are valid, and use it as evidence. Because we're discussing the idea whether the Trinity is there yeah, or not. You can use it as evidence. It's without the it, if it's has, combined, but it has, it has. If you combine the, the rest of the verses in the Bible, I would say you would come to the absolute conclusion Jesus is not God. Right, and I can so give you some examples why. For someone to have authority to forgive sins, where did he get the authority from, according to the Bible? They have to have authority. No, but, but where did Jesus get the authority from, according to the Bible? <laughs> Father, which, yes. So yeah. if I get authority from someone else, that necessitates I didn't have the authority. So how can I be God when I didn't have authority? Because they are separate persons. Who can... But that's what we're trying to establish. Do you see? But what I'm trying I, I see because point, because so you so far. Let me explain. Mean. I'll explain something uh, to maybe it will clarify the idea. When I'm talking about the Bible. I'm not coming from any lenses. I'm coming from an objective lens. I'm trying to, right? As much yeah, as I can. We all come from lenses. We yeah, of course. Lenses. No, no. But what, what I mean that's, by that, what I mean scary. by that, yeah. I'll explain what I mean by that. When I say objective lens, I mean when it comes to the Trinity, not to everything, because we all have biases, right? Yeah. But on the other hand, you might not notice it, but you are coming already from the idea that you believe in the Trinity. Yeah, oh, obviously. Yeah, yeah. So when you read the scripture, you wouldn't notice it, but sometimes you are kind of putting the idea without establishing the idea. What we're trying to do is to establish first the idea of the Trinity in the Bible. Right, so try to I don't know be hard, hard, but try to take the idea of the Trinity from your head, and and then try to look at the Bible and show me where would you find this idea of the Trinity in the Bible. Yeah. So two minutes, I'll let him go. Exactly two minutes, I'll let him go, if that's okay. I'm sorry, I apologize for taking too much time, yeah? I'm sorry about that. Because we're having a nice discussion, right? So It's a big, it's a big topic, so if, like, yeah. because the thing Absolutely. is huge. Okay, okay. let me finish, about, let me finish, so let me finish it up. No problem, I'll finish it up and I will ask both of you a question. Uh, uh, I'll give you a question and I want you to tell me what you think, right? So as Muslims, as Muslims, we believe in one creator. We don't believe the creator has persons. Yeah. We believe just one creator, literally, right? Yeah. One God, one creator, right? Just like the Jews used to believe, Abraham yeah. used to preach, right? We believe in prophets and messengers of God. Jesus, Moses, Noah, Abraham, Muhammad, all of them. You heard about that. We believe in Jesus as a messenger of God. Yeah. Sure, maybe you know about that. We believe in the virgin birth. We hold Mary to a higher God, right? Yeah. So when I've read the Bible, all of it, when I was reading it, I was trying to understand where you guys are coming from. That was my objective of reading the Bible, right? So when I read the Bible, I would say I found so many verses that would go against the idea that Jesus is God. So for example, Christians would say that Jesus is fully man, fully God on earth. Would you agree? So he had all the attributes of God on earth. He was God walking. He was not just human, but he was also God, 100%. So any attributes of God was with him, right? Because if, if it's not there, then he was in God, okay? So that would mean that Jesus was all-knowing, all-powerful, independent, all of these attributes, attributes which makes, makes God, God. Would you agree? Yeah. Was Jesus actually all-knowing when he was on earth? The Bible disagrees with that. Can I say that Jesus was, like, for Jesus to be, like, for Jesus to be fully God doesn't mean he has to be in every way acting. Not acting, no, 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 so no, no. So he cannot exercise. He wasn't huge, like yeah. he wasn't on the sure. so he, he, he doesn't have to exercise his attributes, yes. I agree with you, yeah. but he possesses them. He cannot be 100% God without possessing the attributes of God. That wouldn't make any sense no, logically. No, but like, you don't have to be exercising it. So I agree, I'm not saying he God, is. Not necessarily in action. I agree with you. So yeah. let's move on. God has to have the attributes. He doesn't need to exercise the attributes. Okay, that's a good distinction. I don't disagree with it. Now, coming here to Mark chapter 13, verse 32. Jesus says no one knows and you can go after that. Jesus 
society. He doesn't possess. Yeah. How can you be God and you do not know something? You're ignorant of something. Only the Father knows. Mark 13, 32. Mark, Mark 13, 32, right? So I would say it's impossible to, to, to say something is God when it lacks the attributes of God. That's Unless, you know, I, can I add something? So with prayer, um, it's something I've been thinking about lately. Like, how, how does prayer work if, we are, if God is omnipotent? Um, if God's all powerful and his will stands, how does the prayer work? Like, how could we change any of God's mind to anything like this? So, yeah, that's, so, so, like, that's, so that's more that, determinism and free will. It's yeah, a whole yeah, complete yeah. argument no, 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 there, no, right? No, no. <laughs> I believe. So yes. God in his omnipotence and yes. omniscience and his, and his sovereignty mm. can... That means that he can do whatever he wants. So in that, he can actually plan in his sovereignty react to humans prayers okay so because like prayer how prayer. is that related to no, uh, Jesus not knowing okay so that makes sense yeah okay I, I, so I'll, I'll, Jesus I'll accept it for now Jesus as God <laughs> being fully powerful Jesus as God can actually within his sovereignty he's God he can do what he wants he can actually not know no, and still be God like, sure sure he doesn't have to no I'll disagree because look the difference between what God is and what God does you're conflating the two what God is is his essential attributes what God does can be this or can be that I'm talking about the essential what makes God God by definition you know I have another question yeah where did you get that definition from I'll, I'll, I'll explain to you no problem the minute you confuse what God is with what God does you don't have a God anymore right because in order for me to use the word God the term God I need to already have an idea certain attributes certain definition of what God is and what God does I'll explain I'll explain. And what God does, I'll explain. And what God does is predicated on what God is. Meaning, if God was not all powerful, is, he could not do whatever he wants. One is predicated on another. There's a difference yeah. between the two, right? So that's yeah. the point I'm trying to make. So because God is all knowing, he can know the future, right? Because God is all knowing, he can act in a specific way. But we're talking about what God is right now. God is always all knowing. And when you say God does whatever he wants, he doesn't do anything. Like he does, he can do whatever he wants. Wants, but he doesn't do anything because he's all knowing. Like for example, God would not do injustice to you. He would not put you in hellfire without without any reason, right? He can, yes. but he won't. It's like me saying to you an analogy: you can beat up a baby, but you would never do that because if you're a human, you have human attributes, you compassionate person, right? You wouldn't do something like that. You can, but you won't. So what God is determines what God does. So God is all powerful, all knowing. He does not become ignorant at any point of time. He does not become ignorant at any point of time because if he did become ignorant, he's no longer God. I just, I still think like the thing is God is beyond definition. So God doesn't have to stick. God to defines it. himself in the Bible. God, yes, that's he, the like, he says he's all so knowing. He can't say we as humans can't say no. God must be all knowing. No, no, no. The Bible says God is all knowing. I know. You, okay, so it's not me. It's the Bible. I, I disagree. Maybe you say what God is defines what God does entirely because we don't. Just Can you just, tell me what part you disagree with that? Did you understand my concept? Like, for example, I'm yes, saying God is loving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God loving, loving and just. Therefore, He'll do loving things. No, therefore, He'll do loving things, and He wouldn't do unjust things. Do you disagree with that? We gotta go. I'll let you go. No problem.